This is chapter 8, Gases. Section 8.2 is Pressure and Volume, which is Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that the pressure of a gas is inversely related to its volume. So if you look at this diagram on the left-hand side here, you have a chamber with some gas in it. Right, The, the volume of the chamber is 4 liters, uh, and you have a certain amount of gas particles at a certain temperature, constant temperature, constant number of particles, and uh, the gas particles are exerting a pressure and this piston here, this movable piston, is held in place, and so whatever pressure it's held at is the pressure of the gas particles. Okay? Then, if you take the piston and you apply more pressure to it, you increase the pressure on the gas, then what's going to happen is the gas is going to compress. Right? You're going to push down on the piston, and the gas will compress to a smaller volume. So if you double the pressure from, say, one atmosphere to two atmospheres, then the volume will be cut in half. It'll go from 4 liters to 2 liters in this case. Okay, So multiplying the pressure by 2 causes the volume to be divided by 2. That's what we mean by an inverse relationship. Mathematically, we can express this as uh, the product P times V being a constant. Okay, As long as we hold T and N constant, then the product of P times V will also be a constant. That means if you consider a gas system before and after a change, the pressure and the volume will stay the I'm sorry the pressure times the volume will stay constant as long as you keep uh, the temperature and the number of moles constant so you can express that as this formula or this equation p1 v1 equals p2 v2 okay so what this says is that you have some gas system uh, and initially it's at a pressure p1 with a volume v1 uh, and after you make some change you can either change p1 to be a new pressure p2 in which case V1 will change to be V2, uh, or you could change V from V1 to V2, and then P1 will change to P2. So either way, you make some change to it, to the pressure or the volume, the other variable adapts as a result of that, but in such a way that the product of them is still the same, right? They're still equal. So P1 V1 equals P2 V2. That's the mathematical statement of Boyle's Law. So let's look at an example that should illustrate what we mean when we say that the pressure times the volume is a constant. So suppose you have 8 liters of a gas at 2 atmospheres of pressure, and it's at some temperature, and it has some number of gas particles. We don't really care about what those are, but we just know that they'll be constant for all the changes that we are talking about here. So 8 liters of gas at 2 atmospheres of pressure. We take the pressure, 2 atmospheres, and we multiply it by the volume, 8 liters, and you come up with the number, 16. Okay. The unit here is atmosphere liters, which is a little weird. It doesn't uh, mean much to us right now. We're, we're not going to deal with that, but that is the unit there. Uh, so then what happens if we take this same sample of gas, the same system, and we double the pressure on it? So now the pressure is not two atmospheres, it's four atmospheres. Okay. So we've doubled the pressure to four atmospheres. What that does is it causes the volume to decrease by half. So it goes from eight liters down to four liters. And so when you take the new pressure and the new volume and you multiply them together again, you still get the same number that you got originally. Okay? So the value hasn't changed. The product stays the same as long as the temperature and the number of particles stay the same. And then you can double it again, go from four atmospheres to eight atmospheres. Uh, and then again, to make this stay at a constant 16 atmosphere liters, that means the volume is going to have to have again. So the volume would go down from 4 liters to 2 liters. Okay? So no matter what change you make in the pressure to this system, the volume will make a corresponding change. Or you could look at it the other way and say you make a change to the volume of the system by changing the volume of the container it's in, and then the pressure will change to accommodate that. Okay? So pressure and volume are not fully independent of one another. They're related. They're interrelated with one another. Boyle's Law actually can help to explain uh, the mechanics of breathing, how we inhale and exhale air. Uh, so when we breathe in, we contract our diaphragm. Okay? This is a muscle in the lower abdomen, and when we contract it, it moves down, which expands the volume of the lungs. When the volume of the lungs expands, the pressure drops, right? because they're inversely related according to Boyle's Law. So a larger volume for the lungs means a lower pressure for the air inside. Since the air inside your lungs is now at a lower pressure than the air outside your body, air goes in. Okay? So air and any gas really will always travel from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Okay? It attempts to sort of equalize the pressure. So your lungs have expanded in volume and the pressure has gone down, and so air is going to rush in from the external atmosphere to fill in that space to, to equalize those pressures. 
Okay, so that's inhalation. When we exhale, we do the opposite. The diaphragm relaxes, which causes it to move up, which reduces or contracts the volume of the lungs. That causes the air in the lungs to go to a higher pressure, right? Smaller volume leads to a higher pressure. So now the pressure in the lungs is greater than the pressure of the air outside, and so air is forced out of the lungs and you're exhaling. Okay? So these mechanics are all uh, due to the relationship between pressure and volume. Here's an example of a kind of problem we might get that would require the calculation using Boyle's Law. Uh, so this problem says that Freon 12, which the formula is given, CCL2F2, that's one carbon atom bonded to two chlorines and two fluorines, uh, Freon 12 is used in refrigeration systems. What is the new volume of an 8 liter sample of Freon gas initially at 550 milliliters of mercury after its pressure is changed to 2200 milliliters of mercury at constant temperature and moles? Okay. So this problem is telling us a, a few different things to indicate what kind of equation we're going to go with. So once you start seeing that it's talking about gases and volumes and pressures, then you know that you're going to need to use one of the gas laws, obviously. Uh, this particular one tells you the volume and the pressure, and then it tells you that the pressure has changed and it asks you to find the new volume. Okay. And also tells you that the temperature and the number of moles are constant. So all of these things are clues that indicate that we should be using Boyle's law. So to analyze the problem, we look at what we're given, right? And again, we're given the initial pressure. It says the we have an eight liter sample of gas initially at 550 millimeters of mercury. That means that the initial pressure, P1, is 550 millimeters of mercury, and the corresponding volume is V1, which they tell us is eight liters, right? The sample of gas is eight liter volume. And then it says its pressure is changed to 2200 millimeters of mercury. So that's the new pressure. Pressure two is 2200 millimeters of mercury, the pressure after the change. Okay? And it's asking what is the new volume? So the new volume would be the new volume after the pressure change. Okay? And so that's V2, which is what we need. And then the last piece of information it gives us is that T and N are constant. And that's just sort of there to uh, confirm that we need to use Boyle's Law and emphasize that uh, it fits the requirements, the conditions for Boyle's Law to, to apply. Uh, so once we see all these, we have a pressure and a volume related to one another, and then one of the var variables is changing, and we want to see how that affects the other variable, then we know that we're dealing with Boyle's Law. Okay? And in addition to using Boyle's Law, we can also begin to make a prediction. Right Here we have a 550 millimeter mercury pressure increasing to 2200 millimeters of mercury. So an increase in pressure is going to lead to a decrease in the volume. Okay, so if P increases, then V decreases. Okay, so what that means is that we should expect an answer that is a smaller volume than 8 liters. So once we've analyzed the problem and we know that we need to use Boyle's Law, step two is to just apply Boyle's Law. And to do that, it's helpful first to rearrange it sometimes to isolate the unknown quantity. Now, in this case, the unknown is the new volume, right? The question is asking for the new volume here. So that would be V2 is the unknown quantity. So to get V2 by itself from Boyle's Law, you have to divide by P2. That way, P2 cancels out and you leave V2 all on its own. And then on the other side, that means you also have to divide by P2, okay? So you can say V2 equals P1 V1 divided by P2. Or as it's sometimes expressed, you can bring the V up front and then look at the ratio of pressures as sort of a modulating factor that gets multiplied by it. Okay? So the new volume is going to be equal to the old volume multiplied by some uh, proportion between the two pressures in a sense. Okay? So either of these is fine. It's the same mathematical expression. They're just written a little bit differently. So using that second expression, we have V2, the volume we're looking for, equals the initial volume V1 multiplied by the ratio of P1 to P2. Okay. And so we can start plugging in our values from the problem. V1 is given to us, it's eight liters. Okay, so that goes here. Uh, the initial pressure is 550 millimeters of mercury. The final pressure is 2200 millimeters of mercury. Uh, and so it's important to recognize that the units cancel out here. Okay, so one of the reasons why it's useful to put it in this form, even though it looks like it's you know not necessary at first, and it's not necessary, but it does help to point out 
that the pressure units have to cancel, okay? Because we need to be left with the volume unit. So the new volume is gonna have the same unit as the old volume, as long as the units of our pressures cancel out. If they don't cancel out, then things are gonna get weird with the units and it's gonna be a headache. So make sure that your pressure units cancel out. If one of them is atmospheres, one of them is millimeters of mercury, just convert them both to the same. Okay? It doesn't really matter which one you do because they're canceling out, uh, but make sure they're the same. So then we just do the math, right? Eight times 550 divided by 2200 gives us two. And again, it's two liters because that's the volume unit that's left after the pressure units cancel. So this is the, uh, the way that you can use Boyle's Law to solve this problem. Um, there are other related problems. We'll go through a few more examples, but you should really get used to understanding this and doing these simple manipulations, especially to, uh, say, isolate a variable from Boyle's Law, like we did for V2, uh, because this is going to apply not just to this one, but to Charles's Law, which we'll see next, and Gay-Lussac's Law, and all the other gas laws, and also to many other algebra problems, right? So you should be comfortable with this level of algebra. Um, one other thing, though, is if you are if you have a head for numbers and you recognize uh, something here in the problem, 550 is actually one quarter of 2200. So 550 millimeters of mercury is the pressure multiplied by 4 gives you 2200. Okay? So what that means is that the pressure has quadrupled. And we know from Boyle's law that if the pressure increases, then the volume decreases by the same factor. So if the pressure increased by a factor of four, the volume, which is eight liters, should decrease by a factor of four. So eight liters divided by four gives you your answer of two liters. Okay? So again, if you can recognize those sorts of relationships quickly in the problem, then that's a, a sort of a shortcut to get you your answer. But it requires you to have a little bit of a head for numbers. Okay? So I definitely recommend learning the long way, understanding the long way that's applicable, applicable to a much wider range of problems. Here's another example, which is very similar. In this one, a sample of oxygen gas has a volume of 12 liters at 600 millimeters of mercury. What is the new pressure when the volume changes to 36 liters at constant temperature and number of particles? So this is virtually the same as the previous problem, except instead of telling us the new pressure, they're telling us the new volume. Okay, so we're just going to do the same uh, basic calculations, but we're solving now Boyle's Law for pressure, the second pressure. So again, to analyze the problem, we see what we're given. Initially, you have 12 liters of gas, so that's V1, at 600 millimeters of mercury, so that's P1, right? Those are associated with one another. The gas has this pressure at this volume, so you have to make sure that those are correlated. Uh, and then the new pressure is what we're looking for. Right? It says, what is the new pressure? So the new pressure would be P2, the pressure after the change. And then the change is that the volume has uh, increased to 36 liters. Okay? So V2 is 36 liters. And it again tells us T and N are constant. That's just to remind us it's, it's necessary for Boyle's Law to apply. Okay? Uh, so if we're looking at, again, the relationship between pressure and volume, that means Boyle's Law. And we can do the same thing where we predict what happened. So the volume increased... That means that the pressure, which is inversely related, is going to decrease. Okay? So we're going to be looking for a pressure that's less than 600 millimeters of mercury. And again, once we know we're using Boyle's Law, logically the next step is to rearrange Boyle's Law to solve for the variable that we want. Right? So the, what we want is the new pressure. The question specifically says, what is the new pressure? So we're solving for P2. Uh, so it's very easy. We can just divide both sides by V2. That causes V2 to cancel out on the right-hand side so that P2 is now by itself. And we can say that P2 equals P1 V1 over V2. Or again, we can do the same thing we did last time where we sort of separate out the pressure and we put the volume ratio on its own to indicate again that we're going to need two volumes that have the same unit so that it cancels out in order for us to get a pressure unit. Okay, so you can use either way, but this one helps to emphasize that, that issue with the units a little bit better. So using that, we have P2 equals P1, which is 600 millimeters of mercury, which they tell us in the problem, times V1 divided by V2. Okay, so V1 is 12 liters, V2 is 36 liters. 
that's one third, right? 12 divided by 36 gives you a third. A third times 600 gives you 200 millimeters of mercury as the pressure. Okay. So again, the the we can do it the shortcut. You take the volume of 12 liters and it has to triple to get to 36 liters. So if the volume triples, that means the pressure is going to be reduced by a third, okay? Uh, so, or two a third. So 600 divided by three is 200, okay? So you can do the shortcut again because the numbers work out. Not every problem you get will have numbers that work out this well, uh, but this one does. This is a more conceptual problem. So say you have a cylinder containing helium gas here at the beginning, right? Initial means at the beginning. Uh, indicate if cylinder A or cylinder B represents the new volume for each of the following changes. Okay, and we're going to assume for all these that N and T are held constant. So we're dealing with Boyle's law. So uh, the first change is that if the pressure decreases, so looking at this first container again, this first cylinder, if the pressure on this piston, this piston is being held down with some pressure, if the pressure decreases, are you going to end up with A or with B? And then two says if the pressure increases, which one do you end up with? So it should be pretty clear that one will give you one and the other will be the other, okay? So if you let up on the pressure on this piston, what's gonna happen is the gas particles, which are constantly bouncing off all of the walls, are gonna start to push the piston back, okay? And so the gas is gonna expand and turn into B. Okay? For number two, if you increase the pressure, that means you're pushing down harder on the piston, which means you're gonna compress the gas, and so you would end up with A. Okay. So these are pretty simple conceptual problems, right? I wouldn't, I, I don't think anybody really needs to uh, study too much about Boyle's law to understand this. If you push down on a gas, the gas will compress. If you release your pressure on the gas, the gas will expand. That's, that fits in with most people's everyday experiences of gases. Okay. So back to another calculation question. If a sample of helium gas has a volume of 120 milliliters and a pressure of 850 millimeters of mercury. Uh, so at this point, if you've done enough of these, you should get used to when you're reading a question, just starting to, to sort of mark up the question as you read it. That's what I'm doing with underlining things, right? So if I underline something, it probably means it's gonna be used in some sort of calculation. So here we're talking about a gas, right? It tells me I'm dealing with some gas and it has a volume of 120 milliliters. So I'm gonna put that as the volume. Okay. And it has a pressure of 850 millimeters of mercury. So I'm going to call that the pressure. And then it says, what is the new volume? And so that's my indication that this is a system, a gas system undergoing some change to the volume and to the pressure. Okay. So the new volume I know is a volume, but since now we're talking about a change, I know to call this V2 and this I can think of as V1. And since this is V1, that means this pressure associated with it would be P1. Okay. And then it says, what is the new volume if the pressure is changed to 425 millimeters of mercury? So clearly, this is the new pressure, P2. Okay, and then again, it says at a constant T and N, just to sort of drive the point home. So it's useful to mark up the problem this way while you're going so that you can refer to it, right? You might not be able to do it on the first read through. You might have to read it a couple times before you get used to it. You might have to practice this a few times before you get used to it, but it can be very helpful to do this. Really what you're doing when you mark it up like that is analyzing the problem, right? So I've already uh, identified what variables I have. I was given P1, the initial pressure. I was given V1, the initial volume. Uh, I was told the pressure changed to P2, 425 millimeters of mercury. And I was asked to find the new volume, which we would call V2, okay? And then it just explicitly says T and N are constant. So again, all of these clues, the relationship between pressure and volume, the fact that T and N are constant, all of this points to me needing to use Boyle's law. And again, we can say that the pressure went down this time. So the pressure went from P1, which is 850, to P2, which is 425. The pressure decreased, so I expect the volume to increase. Now, something like this, again, you should try and get used to it because this is clearly the pressure being cut in half, right? 850 divided by two gives you 425. So if the pressure was halved, then I should be able to predict uh, quickly that the volume doubled. So I'm going to predict that the answer is going to be 240 milliliters, which is double the 120. But let's go through the math and double check that. So we can rearrange the gas law to solve for the unknown quantity. This time the unknown quantity is V2, right? The new volume 
is what it's asking for. So we cancel out P2 on both sides. Well, we can't. We divide by P2 on both sides, cancel it out on the right. It gets brought over to the left. And then we can, again, bring the V1 out front from here and then see this as a ratio of P1 to P2. Okay? Again, if you're used to writing it like P1, V1 over P2 and you're more comfortable with that, that's fine. Just remember that you need to cancel those pressure units. Okay? So this is the expression we're going to be using. And we can put in our values. So V1 is 120 milliliters. And then P2 over P1 is 850 divided by 425. Okay? Which is going to be 2 multiplied by 120 gives us the answer. I was expecting 240 milliliters. Okay? So you can see this ratio here, if this ratio between the uh, two pressure units, or in another kind of question, if it's between two volume units, um, if it's a simple ratio that I can identify, then that can help me answer the question very quickly. Right? Again, this, this time the pressure was cut in half, and so the volume doubled as a consequence. This is another conceptual question. This is very similar to that one with the cylinders, right? So a sample of helium gas in a balloon has a volume of 6.4 liters at a pressure of 0 0.7 atmospheres. So this, the initial volume is 6.4 liters and the pressure is 0 0.70 atmospheres. At 1.40 atmospheres, assuming T and N are hold, held constant, uh, is the new volume represented by balloon A, B, or C? Okay. So really, it's not even asking us to calculate anything, right? It's just saying this is the initial balloon. After the pressure changes, right, it goes from 0.70 to 1.4. Is the volume going to be this one, this one, or this one? In other words, does it stay the same volume? Does it get smaller, or does it get bigger? Okay, they're not. This isn't even really drawn to scale necessarily, so it's not like you need to know exactly how much it increases or decreases, just whether it does. Okay, so. This is very simple. The pressure goes from 0.70 to 1.4. Okay? The pressure increases, that means the volume is going to decrease. Okay? There's really not much more to it than that. So some of these conceptual questions for these gas problems, uh, don't overthink them. Okay? Don't assume that you need to do all sorts of calculations. In this case, it's just a very simple idea. As pressure increases, the gas in the balloon is compressed to a smaller volume. And so you end up with a smaller volume of balloon A. Very simple.